Hello and welcome. You're watching Arts TV weekly news review programme with me, Pete Nash. Each week I'll be bringing you the major news items from across Ethiopia and the region. In a recent statement concerning the recent dam negotiations, the Deputy Prime Minister, Demike Makinen, remarked that it is important to refrain from making it an unnecessarily political and international issue. He went on to say that rather it should be embarked upon in a spirit of collaboration, mutual cooperation and unity. Mr. Demike made this remark in a virtual discussion forum organised by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Ethiopian Embassy in London and other European cities. In his speech, the Deputy Prime Minister said if Egypt and Sudan follow a constructive path through the negotiations led by the African Union, they could reach a win-win outcome for all. He also said attempts to impose unnecessary pressure on Ethiopia will not make his country accept colonial era treaties. He added Ethiopia will not tolerate an unfair agreement that would make Egypt and Sudan get an upper hand in the proceedings. Ethiopia has recently started using artificial intelligence in sectors such as health, education, finance and aerospace. It was disclosed that practical applications have started in various development sectors and particularly in the finance sector. The Artificial Intelligence Exhibition, the first in Ethiopia, was officially launched on 15th of April in the presence of the Minister of Science and Higher Education, Dr. Samuel Okato, as well as other high-level government officials. The exhibition, which was organised under the theme Artificial Intelligence for All, was on display for four days after the launch. Artificial intelligence is a technology whereby machines can make advanced calculations to execute various complex activities. It's been said that in many respects, AI resembles the human traits of thinking, learning, reasoning and linguistic interactions. According to the Egyptian news outlet, Amran Online, the Egyptian Foreign Minister, Sami Shukri, has no undue concerns for his country about the second filling of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. In an assessment Sami Shukri presented to the African Affairs Committee of his country's parliament, Egypt's top diplomat was reported to have said that the high levels of rain in the coming months would mitigate any negative impact envisaged from the second filling of the dam. Mr Shukri said he reached his conclusion after comprehensive technical analysis. He was also quoted to have said, what worries us is the brotherly people of Sudan being harmed by the second filling of the dam. Ethiopia reiterates its commitment to the notion of African solutions for African problems. It is to be recalled that the recent negotiations held amongst the three countries in Kinshasa ended without consensus due to differences of interest amongst the three countries. The National Council for the Public Participation for Dam Construction has announced that over 1.5 billion burr has been collected for the dam construction in the past nine months. In the release he gave to the Ethiopian news agency, the media and communications director of the council, Mr. Hailu Abraham, said in, in total 15 billion burr has been donated by the public since 2011. According to the director, the funds have been secured through bond sales, gifts and contributions made on mobile text messages. In addition, Ethiopians in the diaspora have contributed greatly. Mr. Hailu noted that the public support for the dam has grown significantly over time, especially after the successful completion of the first round of water filling. He pointed out that fundraising will continue in the remaining three months of the budget year with the aim of reaching a target of 2 billion burr. Ethiopian Cargo and Logistics Service has so far transported over 20 million COVID vaccinations to over 20 countries around the world. It has now reported that 3.5 million doses of the vaccine were recently thrown from Shanghai, China to Sao Paulo, Brazil. Chief Executive Officer of the Ethiopian Airlines Group, Ms. Toelde Gabri Mariam, said the airliner has been playing its part in the prevention efforts against the COVID virus. He said the airline has an unwavering commitment to fight the pandemic and save lives in Africa and beyond. 
Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed last week inaugurated the building complex that will serve as the headquarters for the Ministry of Peace and Information Network Security Agency, Artificial Intelligence Centre and Financial Security Information Centre. It was reported that this huge complex will save the agencies close to 90 million burr a year, which has been annually on rented office space. The inauguration was attended by a number of high-ranking officials, members of the armed forces, the national police, regional presidents and the president of the Supreme Court. Report sent to Arts TV from the communications office of the Galana local government indicate that extremists have been hiding out in the houses of worship in Ethiopia. Despite long-standing symbols of peace and harmony, these holy buildings have recently been used as refuges for radicals. As a show of support and unity, youth and local church parish brought food and beverages to their Muslim brethren during Ramadan when breaking their fast. Islamic teacher Ustaz Herbe Wabay said, such benevolent deeds have significant roles in strengthening interfaith brotherhood in our country. General manager of the Galana district churches said the kind deeds by the youth were admirable. He said that since faith means harmony and love, other places and people should be encouraged to do similar activities. Sheikh Saifuddin Tamam, Imam of the Bilal Mosque, said all people within the country should do similar deeds since such acts not only strengthen our brotherhood but also raise the dignity of our country. This brings us to the end of another weekly news review with Arts TV. I've been Peter Nash. Hopefully we'll see you next week for the same programme.